Hello everybody, thank you for joining us for another nature story time this week. We are going to be talking all about birds today because there is a very special day coming up this weekend on Saturday, May 9th, but we'll talk about that in just a little bit. If you've been getting outside, which I really hope that you have, you, like me, you've probably noticed that we have a lot of birds around that we haven't seen in a while. Uh, so some of our birds stay here all winter long and some of our birds leave in the winter and come back in the spring. So some of the birds that stay all winter are birds like this black capped chickadee. You can see in this picture he's all fluffed up so that he can stay warm. Those feathers are helping trap heat against his body. So it's like wearing a big down coat. Um, you might hear them in your yard singing chickadee dee 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 dee. Some of our other birds that you might see all winter long, we have a few species of woodpecker. This is our downy woodpecker, our smallest one. Um, they often come to the feeders in our yard, so you might have seen a bird like that. Our nut hatches, we have two different kinds, white-breasted and red-breasted nut hatches here. They stay all winter long, and they're happy to eat seeds at your feeder, so maybe you've seen them too. We have some very colorful birds that stay all winter long. So maybe you've seen blue jays in your yard, or maybe you've heard them. They're very, very noisy. And my guess is throughout this video, I'm out in my backyard on my porch. We will probably hear a blue jay at some point. Or maybe this color colorful bird. Our cardinals also stay here all winter long, at least if you're listening from the Driftless region. If you're listening from our Pine River branch, you probably don't see very many cardinals up there. This bird is actually really special. This is the male, it's very colorful. The female is kind of a brown color, but both of them sing just as much. So usually in the songbird world, our males sing to attract a mate, but in cardinals, both the males and the females sing, which is pretty cool. Our last bird, we have lots of birds here that stay all winter, but the last one that I'm gonna show you is our barred owl. This is our most common type of owl, and I know I have one somewhere behind my house. I hear it, I've been finding the pellets. Um, from it, which I showed you in a video, but I have not seen it. So they can be really hard to find, but I know they're around. They make a song that sounds like, who cooks for you, when they um, do their hooting. So listen for that. I've been hearing it a lot lately because they are also um, mating right now and finding mates, so they've been very active. So those birds are just some examples of birds that stay all winter, but most of our birds leave and fly away somewhere warmer. Does anybody know what that's called? when a bird leaves for the winter and it comes back in the spring? Yeah, that's right, it's called migration. So our birds are just migrating back north now. Does anybody know why our birds migrate? I'll give you a hint. It's not because they get cold. So think about our little tiny chickadees can survive here all winter because they have feathers that help keep them warm. If your guess was related to food, you are absolutely right. So a lot of our birds eat insects. Some of them might eat the seeds or berries from plants. And in the winter, those things are really, really hard to find, right? We don't see a lot of them. So they migrate to where there's more food for the winter months, and then they come back in the summer, like right now when all of our plants are budding, and there have been a lot of big insect hatches. So our birds are back now because there's a lot of food. So we're going to read a story today about the very first bird that we tend to see return in the spring. It's oftentimes considered the first sign of spring when this bird returns. It is kind of dark gray or maybe black with a red belly and it hops around in your yard to eat worms um, from the grass. Any guesses as to what this bird is? If you said a robin, you are absolutely correct. So our book today is all about robins. It's called Robins, How They Grow Up, and it was written by Eileen Christilo. This book has a ton of information about robins, so it's a really fun story that I love a bunch. I hope you enjoy it too. It's kind of a big book, so hopefully we can see all the pictures in here, and I'll do my best as we go. Who are we? We're robins. Our black and white speckles mean we're young, a few months old. Robin teenagers. Why are we living in your yard? Well, here's the story. First, let's tell about dad's long trip. You mean before we were born?
At the end of winter, the days stay light longer and the robins grow restless. They know it's time to start new families. But first, they must head north, where the ground is thawing after a long winter. Soon there will be plenty of food for new babies, fat earthworms, newly hatched insects, and in a few months, a fresh crop of fruit. All across the country, the males set out first, millions of them, including Dad. They stop to eat and sleep along the way. It's a dangerous and exhausting trip. Dad escaped from a hungry falcon, and he was held up by a storm. So there they are, where it's nice and warm, and they start flying back, and there's predators, so animals that might want to eat them, like a falcon. And there's a big storm here. A couple of weeks and a few hundred miles later, wow, that's a long way for a little bird. Dad arrives in a familiar area, not far from where he raised a family last year. Now he needs a place to call his own. He looked for safe places to build nests and to hide from predators. And for water and good worm soil. So those are all things a robin needs in the area they build their nests. Dad chooses a spot with plenty of trees and a lawn full of juicy worms. This is my place, my place, my place, he sings. A few other males try to move in too, but Dad chases them next door. Why didn't Dad want to share? He needed his own place to raise a family. A few weeks later, female robins start showing up, including Mom. She hears Dad singing and meets him over a breakfast of delicious worms. He looks strong and healthy, the perfect father for baby robins. So she sticks around. Dad doesn't chase her away. Males have darker heads and females are slightly lighter in color. So you can see here this would be a male robin. He has that, oops, dropping my papers. He has a very dark head and then the female robin looks like she has kind of a grayer head. So if you have robins in your yard, see if you can tell if they're male or female robins. After resting from her long trip, mom searches for the, say, a safe place to build a nest, somewhere protected from predators and rain. She chooses a hoe in an open shed. So you can see she's on a garden hoe. Why not build the nest in a tree? No leaves yet, so the choices were an evergreen tree or that of a shed. So because they come back so early in the spring, the trees don't have leaves yet which is why you might find a robin building a nest on your house or maybe under your porch, somewhere where they're protected from rain. She makes hundreds of trips with beakfuls of straw, twigs, dry leaves, even a piece of red string. She squishes in lots of mud with her feet and wings to hold everything together. After a few days, she has a bowl-shaped nest. When the mud is dry, she lines it with soft grasses. A nest is a cradle for baby birds. Mom lays one fertile blue egg each day. Four days later, she's ready for her next job. What did dad do? He fertilized the eggs and protected the nest. Mom sits on her eggs, keeping them warm so baby birds will grow inside. She turns the eggs often so the temperature stays even. Otherwise, the babies might stick to the shell. She warmed the eggs against a patch of skin on her belly. That's her brood patch. When mom leaves the nest to find food, she can't stay away for long. One day when mom is away, a squirrel invades our nest. Luckily, mom discovers him before he devours all of the eggs. You can see he got one egg. Dad pursues him into the woods, pecking at his behind. Now only three eggs remain. Robins, or squirrels eat robin's eggs? Yep, and so do blue jays and crows and snakes. So those are all predators of our robins. Mom sits on those eggs for 13 days. Then the first one she laid begins to crack. A tiny egg tooth on a tiny beak appears. Tap, 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 it's a baby, pushing its way out. Mom carries away bits of shell. Then the baby needs to rest 
under her warmth before struggling again. Hours later, there's an exhausted, naked baby robin, barely able to lift its head for food. It's a lot of work to get out of your egg. By the next day, there are three of us, a tangle of helpless babies covered with whitey down fluff. Our eyes are still closed, but when we feel the nest rock slightly, we open our orange beaks wide. Is it mom? Dad? Feed me! We're hungry all the time. Are any of you hungry all the time? I bet you are. We ate baby food, regurgitated worms. Yum. Doesn't sound very yummy. Six days old. Our eyes are open. Our feathers are just beginning to emerge and we can eat grown up food. Pieces of worms, caterpillars, and moths. Feed me, feed me. Soon after we eat, we poop little white sacks, which mom and dad eat or carry away. They make trip after trip back and forth, always keeping an eye on the nest. They had to keep our nest clean. Yeah, no one wants to sleep and poop. The first week, when we don't have many feathers, mom sits on us at night, and at times during the day, keeping us warm and dry. It's cozy under there. Eight days old. More feathers! Each one grows in a little sheath that looks like a tiny straw. As we move around and preen and scratch, the sheaths crumble into pieces and our feathers unfold. Feathers help keep us warm and dry and help us fly. See, there's little tiny sheaths. They're like little straws and their feathers come out of there. <clears throat> Over two weeks, we eat about 350 insects and 14 feet of worms each. All that food makes us grow quickly. We are almost as big as mom and dad. Robins don't have teeth. We grind up food in our gizzard. Food goes down our esophagus, which expands for large pieces. So they have this little tube in their throat called their esophagus, which can get bigger, so big pieces of food can go down. And then they have a special pouch called a gizzard, which works to grind up food into smaller pieces so they can digest it because they don't have teeth like us. 14 days old. For a couple of days, we've been flapping our wings and standing on the edge of the nest. Today, one of us takes off. A few hours later, another follows. Now, one is left all alone. He hears his brother calling, so he perches on the edge of the nest. It's a long way down. He flaps his wings, pushes off, and he's flying. Well, flapping, falling, flying, falling, down, down, down. Thwump, hop, hop. Where is everyone? Mom flies down. Choop, 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 follow me. Take a good look at this picture and see if you can see any danger for our baby Robin. Then, suddenly, chip, 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 calls Dad. Danger, danger, danger. Where? Brother hops and flaps, and flap, flutter, flaps as fast as he can, taking refuge among some tall plants. He stays very still. His heart is pounding. Finally, Mom shows up with the succulent moth. So we had a cat chase him, and he's hiding. So even when our baby robins leave the nest, their parents are still caring for them. So mom is feeding him in his new location, hiding under some plants. It says cats kill lots of baby birds. So if you have a cat at home that goes outside, one of the best things you can do for the birds is to make your cat wear a collar and then it can't sneak up on birds so easily so they have a better chance of getting away from your cat. Fifteen days old. We're back together. Mom and Dad keep us hidden under tall plants. We're partially camouflaged by our speckled feathers. We are helpless. We don't know how to find food. We can barely fly. We don't know anything. Mom and Dad had to teach us. Mostly Dad. Mom was building a new nest for more babies. How do we learn to fly? We hop and run and flap, 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 strengthening our wings and legs. After a few days, we can fly short distances. Our tail feathers are still growing in. 
Tail feathers help us with steering and balance. Strong wings give us the power to lift off the ground. It's a lot of work to learn to fly. When we can fly well enough, Dad leads us to a special tree nearby where we spend the night with other Robin Dads and their kids. It's a roost, a flock of birds looking out for one another. Sleeping in a roost, a roost is safer. And we meet other Robins. So just the Dads and the kids all sleep together. Three weeks old, we're stronger and bigger and we have full tail feathers. We still depend on Dad for food. In the early morning, when he goes hunting for worms, we follow, waiting to be fed. But Dad couldn't feed us forever, because soon there would be new babies to feed. Dad starts dropping the worms, and we have to find them. We poke and peck and scratch, and then we learn a trick. If we tilt our heads, we can see and hear better. With a little practice, we're finding moths, spiders, caterpillars, and worms. Our eyes are on the sides of our heads. Yeah, I'm looking right at you. So you might see robins in your yard hopping through the grass and they kind of tilt their head back and forth. They're listening for worms in the grass, which is pretty cool. Six weeks old, now we can find our own food. But it's hard work. Sometimes we still want dad to feed us. This time, it's our brother begging, cheep, cheep. Dad ignores him. He's not listening. See, see, see. It's another robin alerting us to an intruder. Dad darts away. Chip, 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 he warns. Two of us escape into a tree, but our brother continues. Cheep, 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 cheep. Uh-oh. What do you think's going to happen to their brother? Cheep, cheep, whoosh. We hear beating wings, a hawk, a shriek. Then it's quiet. Our brother is gone. Mom and dad chase the hawk, scolding and screaming, but he flies away. Our brother dangling from his talons, a meal for hungry hawk babies. Hawk babies eat mice and chipmunks and birds. So this would be a predator of the robins and the hawks have babies too, and they need to eat food if they're gonna grow up. And one thing that they eat is other baby birds. We stay very still. Eventually, the shrieking stops. The woods return to normal. We hear Dad call, chip, 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 chip. We answer, cheep, cheep, cheep. It doesn't take us long to find him. We learn, we are learning robin talk so we can communicate with other robins. Dad leads us to a nearby stream. We flap and splash, ruffling our feathers so the water gets down to our skin. We feel much better. We dry off in the sun, preening, oiling, smoothing, and realigning our feathers and nibbling away any remaining dirt or itchy fleas. We take oil from a gl gland at the base of our tail. We need clean, oiled feathers if we want to fly and stay warm and dry. So you could also add a bird bath to your yard and you might see robins doing this in your yard. Eight weeks old. We're almost grown up. We spend our days flying around with friends from the roost, always watching the older robins, listening and learning. Just like some of you might learn from your older siblings. We are learning how to be robins. We're still learning. If we hear a mob of scolding robins, we fly over to watch but from a safe distance. So who are they screeching at here? Usually they're ha hassling the neighborhood owl. They didn't want him near their nest because he might eat their babies. Three months old. Now there are more robins around. New fledglings and the moms have joined us. There won't be any more babies or nest building until next year. The robins aren't squabbling over territory or protecting new broods. They're friends again, moving around together. Then we make another discovery. We always watch to see where the robins, where the older robins found food. 
We saw them hanging out in that tree. Hmm. What do you think is in the tree that they might be excited about? We fly over and find them grabbing crab apples. We watch carefully, then try to grab some too. Picking fruit is almost as tricky as catching worms. At first, it's easier just to eat what drops on the ground. Now we're eating crab apples and berries. As it gets colder, worms and insects will disappear. Five months old. These robins are getting ready for winter. We're stuffing ourselves with food, growing fatter and stronger. And we're molting, replacing old worn out feathers with new ones. Everyone is restless. Is something about to change? Hey, you're losing your speckled feathers. So are you. We're molting. What do you think they're getting ready for or what's going to change? With fresh new feathers to keep us warm, we could stay here all winter. But in cold northern winters, worms burrow deep underground and insects disappear. And there's less fruit left on the trees. So most of our flocks start to wander south where our favorite foods will be easier to find. Of course, we follow. And that's our life so far. We'll be back next year. The end. So that's everything about a robin that you might see happening in your yard this year. Um, like I said, lots and lots of different birds are starting to come back and I'll talk more about that in just a second. But this Saturday is a really, really special day. It's something called the Global Big Day. It happens just once in the spring. There are other days sort of like this that happen in the winter and I'll talk about those later in the year. But on this Global Big Day, everybody like you or me can become a scientist, which is really neat. And we can go out and make observations in nature and we can record all the birds that we see on that one special day. And we upload those birds or put in our data on the internet and tell the scientists what we saw. And that information can help scientists a lot when they're studying birds. So they can't be everywhere in the world all at once to see what's going on with our birds. So they rely on people like us to go out and make observations for them and share that information. And that information can be really, really important to them because then they know, they might know, wow, there's a ton of yellow warblers here and we never knew that. We better protect that land so that those birds can keep coming back there year after year. So it helps our scientists and it helps our birds through conservation efforts. So you can play a really big role in that just by going out and recording the birds that you find. So again, that Saturday is May 9th is our global big day. And I'll put more information about that down um, in our resources. The other really fun citizen science, that's what we call that when you guys turn into the scientists, um, project that you can do with birds in the summer is called Nest Watch. So maybe you have a robin nest in your yard or a different kind of bird nest that you can easily get to. And we've even put like compact um, makeup mirrors on the end of sticks so that we could look way up in the nest that we couldn't reach. But you can join this program called Nest Watch for free and make observations about your nest every about four days or so and record those and turn that data into scientists and they can use that too. So there's a few different citizen science options that I'll put down in our resources below. Um, I'm also going to put some information, like I said, about Global Big Day and about activities that you can do at home. One of them is to make your own nest. It's actually really hard, but it can be really fun to try. Um, and then some different activities that will help our birds. One is to put up bird silhouettes on your window, so a craft that you can do that will help birds. Sometimes the reflection on our window might look like woods or trees and the birds fly right into them and they can actually die from that. So one thing we can do to help the birds is to break up that reflection on the window by putting different things on the window. So I'll have a link to that. I'll also have a link um, to a nesting platform that if you want more of a hands-on building activity, you can build these platforms. I've done it with kids before. It's really fun. Um, you just need a simple hammer and nails and some wood which I think now you can pick up curbside, hopefully, so you don't have to go into a store to get that, um, and build something that you could put out in your yard, and it will hopefully help our birds too. 
Before we go, I'm going to show you just a few more pictures of birds that I've been seeing lately and that you might see if you go out for a global big day this weekend to look for birds. This is our eastern bluebird. They are very brightly colored, so they might kind of stick out when you're looking for birds. If you go to an open field or a grassland, you'll probably see these. They might be perched um, kind of off to the side on a, um, a telephone wire or maybe a nesting box or a tree branch that kind of hangs out where they can look for insects from there. Another one you might see, especially if you go into the Trempolo Refuge, is our yellow warbler. These are very small, very fast birds, but because they're bright yellow like this, it makes them kind of easy to find. We have about 30 other species of warblers that are all small, all very fast, um, and a lot of them are way up in the treetops. So right now is a really good time to look for them because the leaves aren't all the way out yet. Once the leaves are out, they become even harder to find. So if you find a warbler this weekend, high five, that's awesome. They're hard to find. I've been seeing a lot of this bird in the last few days. So this is our rose-breasted grosbeak. You can tell he's called that because he has a very red um, breast and that kind of sticks out in the woods too so it can make them easy to find. They have a very pretty song. You might find them singing. They even sing sometimes on their nests. So listen and be looking for that red patch on their chest. This one is our eastern towhee. It's often confused with a robin, and you can probably see why. He's kind of dark gray or black, maybe a darker head, and then he has that red belly. Um, I've been seeing them in my yard, and I also saw a bunch at Perot State Park, so keep your eyes out for this bird. They tend to not be super shy. I've been able to get pretty close to them or I get pretty close before I realize they're there. So you might get a pretty up close look at this bird. Two birds that you're going to want to look for if you're going near water this weekend. Well, three. One, and I don't have a picture of it, is the Canadian geese. I've been out a lot this week and they all have babies with them, which I always love to see. I think the babies are so cute. So look for our, our geese and the new um, babies. You might see a really big bird like this, it's called our great blue heron, um, hunting in the water. So they stand kind of near the weeds and the water's edge, and they are very, very good hunters. They stand very, very still, and then when they see something, they have that really long beak they can use to stab it with. So look for our great blue herons, and look for our tree swallows. These birds tend to skim right above the water catching bugs, so you'll see tons of them flying over our waterways. Let's see, I know we're getting short on time here. Another one you might see near the water or in the middle of the woods, which always kind of spooks me, is a wood duck. So they nest up in trees, in um, tree cavities and hollows in the trees. So sometimes you might just find them in the forest up on a branch, which is not really where you might expect to see a duck. Or you might see them swimming in the water. Um, another warbler that I've been seeing a lot of is this palm warbler. Again, if you go to the refuge, if you do the wildlife driving loop, I've seen palm warblers there almost every time I've gone in the last two weeks. So that's a good place to look for them. One you might see in your yard. This bird is in the woodpecker family. It's called the northern flicker. And sometimes I find their feathers on the ground, which is really exciting because each feather has one little spot on it on their front, on their chest. So they're really cool feathers to find. Or if you find feathers from their wings, they have the, the piece of the feather in the middle called the shaft is bright yellow on these birds. So that's really fun to find. All right, I won't show you any more birds because I could go on forever. There are tons of birds out there, but I hope you have fun looking for them this weekend. I hope you have fun using the resources that I'll put in the comments down below. Um, and have a great week. We'll see you next week for Storytime Wednesday at 1 o'clock. Bye.